Well, I'm sitting here in the beautiful Judith Mountains, just outside Lewistown, Montana. We uh, bicycled here yesterday from Great Falls. And the reason we're here, we're at the Judith Mountain Lodge. And we're speaking with Nicole, who owns the lodge. But I came through here about a month ago and sort of discovered the lodge. And it was such a beautiful place. And, she, and we had a connection. And our connection is North Dakota. So she's from Roulette, North Dakota. Went to school at North Dakota State. I went to school at the University of North Dakota. We were North Dakota College rivalries. And we had this interesting conversation about Nicole and her businesses, and she's quite entrepreneurial. So I said, when we come through, we're going to stay at the lodge, and I'm going to interview you. So, Nicole, tell me how you got from Roulette to NDSU to Lewistown. Well, it was because when I was growing up in North Dakota, I had this itch that I was not going to remain in North Dakota my whole life. I had... Um, like the mountains, the uh, rolling hills, more. I was by the Turtle Mountains, which is yep. almost the only hills in <laughs> North Dakota. For those that are not familiar with North Dakota, I think the tallest hill is 300 feet and there's only one. <laughs> yep. So I was grew up on a farm and I worked in a vet clinic. And my passion and what I wanted to do was work at a, a vet clinic. Um, become a veterinarian so I was doing that since I was 12 years old and back in North Dakota we got farmer permits so hence the uh, yeah. working so young we were able to do yep. that and I s wanted to graduate a little year early and I took a correspondence class with the veterinarian that I worked with mm -hmm. and sh then I ended up going to NDSU when I was in my fourth year of NDSU, I had a friend that knew of somebody in Gardner, Montana, and he hires people every summer. And what he was hiring people for was being in the food industry, bartender, mm -hmm. uh, waiting on tables, that kind of stuff, in the north entrance of the Yellowstone Park. Well, oh, yeah. I went and did a little research on Yellowstone National Park, and I thought, wow, here's my opportunity to move to Montana. So, um, on a whim, I dropped out of my internship that I had, and I called my mom and said, don't worry, I will finish college, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right now, I am going to move to Montana in two days. So, I sold my horse for $700, had enough money to come out to Montana, and this little farm girl uh, went to bartending in Gardner. So, did you ever graduate? I did. <laughs> All right. I did. I was, um, I was pregnant with my first child, and I went back to Fargo and finished in, let's see, 19, I don't know, 95. It was one of the worst winters there was. Oh. Um, so, January to May. That's, Cold, ugly North Dakota yep, winter. Yep, made trips yeah. back and forth. Well, good for you. Yep. Good for you. So, you come here, young, you know... <laughs> just curious about the world kind of woman and you're bartending and I meet you I don't know how many years later and you're mm -hmm. and you're this budding entrepreneur and so tell me how you went from bartending to owning the lodge here well uh, I was first of all I was bartending through and then having two kids and I uh, would work at night and in the day, I leased hay fields and would put up um, hay. So I would irrigate mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And my husband had a friend that was coming out to a bull sale in Billings. And we were there. And he said that how he uh, sold his cattle was over the Internet. And I was like, selling cattle over the Internet? He says, yes, you would be really good at doing something like that. And I really enjoyed the concept of instead of somebody just coming to me and saying, here's your bid, this is what you get, is he learned more about the practice, management practices of the ranch and what the cattle should be in the market today and would you like to market that way. So it took me about six months. I bought a computer from my neighbor for $300 and I got on DSL, because we were south of Livingston, kind of in the middle of nowhere. 
and uh, found the company that he was talking about. And I gave him a call on the phone and said, are, are you looking for a rep? And um, that's kind of how I got started in the cattle business. And that was in 1998. So you, you started as a rep, but then you learned about the business and then you decided that with a little bit of twist, you could you could make the business better for both the uh, cattle ranchers and yourself, frankly. And so yep. tell me, and you branched out on your own and started your own little company. So tell me a little bit about that innovation and what the innovation was and then how that company has grown over the last several years. Okay. Well, uh, the customers that I dealt with were mainly north of, of here. And so I was traveling from the south of the state to the north of the state and uh, visiting with ranchers that had never had a computer or was, weren't going to get one. So when I would tell them this is how we're going to sell the cattle instead of just being in a, such a local market, um, I was really surprised at how uh, that they they were like yes how open they were to the concept and um, we when a bigger company bought this company that I was working for they were always my competition so I decided to branch out and and leave because um, mm -hmm. to go to a different company then I was owners of a company uh, in Montana another company that was an internet company and then I decided to go on my own, um, and that was probably about 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Yep. And now you broker cattle uh, not just in Montana, but also in North Dakota? Yep. 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 I've been in uh, North Dakota, Idaho, um, nor uh, Montana, of course, and I've, I'll have some reps work throughout the state because yep. you can only ship so many cattle. Uh, yeah. At the same, everybody wants to ship about the same time, and then once the fall run gets done here in Montana, then I'll move into North Dakota, and do and, the weaned cattle. And so what you're able to do then is you're able to uh, take someone that was maybe locally going to their local auction house, yep. and now they can market their cattle, you know, regionally or even nationally, I assume. Yep. And and you'll broker all that back and forth and for them. Correct. So they can make that connection between the buyer and the seller and the shipping and all that gets taken care of. Yep, and I'll just come right to their ranch. I have a weigh scale that I haul around with me. It's a 24-foot weigh scale. So if their place has a facility to have a semi back up, I can just come there with my weigh scale. We can weigh the cattle there. Uh, less stress on the cattle, less stress on everybody. And load them up on the truck and send them mainly to places like Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, mm -hmm. North Dakota, Minnesota. So, so what are the main kinds of uh, uh, cattle that you, uh, the species of cattle that you find in the area? In the mainly region? here, we deal with the uh, Angus base, Red yeah. Angus, Black Angus, and then they'll have a little um, composite in, whether it's a Simital cross yeah. or a Hereford. You know, yeah, we'll have yeah. a Hereford Angus yeah. cross. Yeah. That's mainly in uh, Charlay. Is another yeah, one. Yeah, and then so you're you're in the broker business. That's your main line of work. Yep. And you're uh, and you're uh, and you come across this lodge. <laughs> so how did that happen? How did you find out about this lodge and what possessed you to buy the lodge? <laughs> well, I don't know if it's mainly the uh, auction mentality, but uh, what happened was I was in a a place and they had he said that there was a lodge for sale and it was happening like in 10 minutes so he wanted to go see how much this lodge was selling for and it was on an auction online auction and i had never been here before and that's how it was i guess i don't like to lose <laughs> so you you won the auction and and yep. so what who owned that property before and what were the circumstances and what did the property look like when you first drove up and Saw well, what you had uh, so uh, uh, astutely acquired. <laughs> when I signed the paperwork, the property actually was owned by 12 different investors. Mm -hmm. This elderly lady had owned the place. She had actually lived here, built it, and everything. And it, uh, I think it was just way too much for her to keep up. And so it had been empty for a long time. All the plumbing needed to be redone. It was kind of falling apart it was yeah not very pretty let's put it this way there was not one person of my friends or family that came up and looked at it and said wow Nicole you could really do something with this 
going, what they did thought, you, they thought, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, four years later, it is a great little steakhouse and a little getaway that the locals have. Full liquor bar and, and 10 bedrooms. Uh, just added a, lo a cabin that you stayed at yep, last night. Yep, beautiful log cabin. Yeah. We were entertained last night Good. a little bit, but she has entertainment throughout the summer and fall. And, and so it's quite a little gathering place. It's only six miles from uh, downtown uh, Lewistown. Yeah. So it's very convenient. And then there's a hiking trail that's about, what, eight miles, I think? There's two something. different trails. Yep, there's one that's about seven, seven and a half miles to go all the way around. And then there's one going up to the Outlook, and that's only like three miles. Yep, yep. So it's quite a, quite a unique place. And then, I, and then you have some more plans, though. So <laughs> when I, you were telling me about uh, some ideas you have for 17 corners, I think, 17-mile corners. Yeah, it's 17 miles out of town, and I just uh, purchased property there. And last fall, I had an opportunity to purchase a portable packing plant. And I had sent some live cattle up to Alaska, and that is where he was using the packing plant. And then last fall, uh, I decided to purchase it and move it down to Montana. So just got that set up and working on digging the well and yep, getting that electricity. Hole. Yep. Yep. So, so when is your what's your goal to open the uh, plant uh we should have a trial run here in just a few weeks oh great yep yep and so hopefully in the next month and a half we'll we'll get the full you know usda inspection it's already inspected the plant is itself but then the montana usda will come in and grant that inspection yep. and so, we'll be up and running so so you've had his career <laughs> of, of uh, learning and taking uh, advantage of opportunities and insight into seeing where maybe you could do things a little differently and a little bit better. Uh, tell me, um, in your history of these kinds of things, uh, what advice did someone give you that you felt was really valuable? What advice? Well, Husband or friend or, <laughs> or even a competitor? Maybe, maybe I guess a good advice would be is um, follow your dream instead of listening to other people that pretty much you know a lot of things I do everybody looks at me and shakes their head and says that will never work but if you have the heart and the um, you can do you can do anything yeah that's great great advice you yourself yeah. one question I've asked people is, did you ever re receive good advice from somebody but you even though it was good advice, you ignored it for whatever reasons. And it was the right thing to do was to ignore it. Right? So what was that advice and why did you ignore it? Okay, so <laughs> maybe uh, probably the cattle brokering business is because, one, there's not very many women that do it. Uh -huh. and, um, and two, the concept of selling cattle over the internet so that was would be like both i guess would be early on yep. in the in the business ah uh, yeah so what you're saying is people would have said that'll never work because Correct. you're a woman and nobody knows anything about the, what's the internet what right. is that no one cares no one has computers exactly and you said nah that's right. where everything's going and it made me drive um i guess harder you know especially a long, long time ago when I first started, it was more of my competition. I know that there was like a rumor veil, you know, well, she'll never last or something. And um, I guess hearing things like that just made me try harder. And Yeah, so so Montana is not like, a, it's kind of got a Marlboro Man image, right? <laughs> and and so you've been able to navigate as a, a, a woman yeah. in a Marlboro Land, uh, Cowboy yeah. Land, and uh, uh, how have you been able to do that maybe better than others? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I, you know, maybe some of the wives felt comfortable with me on that side too. Um, there's a lot of wives that, that run the show yeah. on the ranch. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, sure. You yeah. know, I mean, that could be a good or a negative, you know? Yep, so yep, we have yep. a little bit of both. You obviously didn't let that, no. you know, bother you one bit. Nope. You were no. going to be Nicole and do what you wanted to do and yep. follow that dream and 
Let everyone else worry about that. Yep. Yep. Same as the lodge. You know, when I got the liquor license, they were like, what are you doing getting a liquor license out there? Like, well, now since I have a liquor license, I might as well make a steakhouse. Well, no one's going to drive six miles on that gravel road to go out and have a steak. And to me, I think that's the destination. Yeah. Well, it was pretty full last night. Yeah. You know, Good. and the hotel was full, and we certainly enjoyed our meal. Yep. And we drove, Thanks. we drove a lot more than six <laughs> yes, miles. Yes, you did. <laughs> I bicycled, I don't know, nine hundred miles. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> well, that's yeah. great. So, was there ever a time when you were working on a project, the lodge or something else, where you sat down with your family or your, or your husband or whatever, and you were looking at this thing and going, "Boy, I don't know how this is going to work, and how are we going to make it work?" And what was that? If that happened, what was that talk like? Um, I usually don't have those talks. I have those talks to myself, maybe. <laughs> but I might not have them with somebody else because I don't like getting discouraged by listening to, you know, the negative stuff. So it's like there's a, there's always bumps in the road yeah. everywhere. And I've had some pretty major ones and, and end up getting through it. And you just, you know, pray for whatever comes was meant to be or... Yeah, so um, follow your heart and persevere absolutely. and and keep at it and yeah. don't get too discouraged. And... Absolutely, because there's a lot of times where there would be a lot of people that would throw up their hands, but yeah, yeah, I don't take those bumps in the road. Like they're just bumps. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> great. Well, uh, where do you have any other projects cooking now that you got the processing plan almost open and you're thinking of something else or you're kind of like yeah. staying put for a little while or well for right now let's get the processing processing plant going um i guess what maybe my goal is for that would be maybe if somebody wants to form a co-op or something with that processing plant it's not just the processing plant but it's also the retail store that will oh, be built yeah. right there at the highway oh, yeah. at that intersection so i'm hoping that somebody will come up to me and say boy this is this is what i wanted to do the main reason why i wanted to do that was to uh you know i guess maybe maybe it takes somebody like me that just needs to get it going because maybe too many people could throw up their hands but once this gets going i have a feeling we can in the industry have more yep. than and that is where um that's where it's going to better everything well, it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a classic um uh kind of we uh we tend to have community development with people that are close to the community and so you've taken a historic resource cattle Yep. and brokered that and now with the prosecutor plant you're you're adding some value so it's not yep. just brokering cattle it'll add, add value all the way up and down the supply chain right to the customers absolutely in, in their uh, in fact we have a we have a fund that specializes in working with co-ops oh uh, great angel investment fund and so when you're ready for that ah uh, yes know, we'll i will be ready introduced perfect because that's what they like to do and they and they've invested in different kinds of food co-ops and other kinds good. of co-ops and there's a lot of really good examples of course in farm country about co-ops we grew up in a yes. area that has a lot of farm co-ops you yes. know, and grain co-ops and that so it's it's a very appropriate business model for what you're kind of trying to do great great news well I, you know the only other thing is i don't know if und has played any issue in football yet this year <laughs> I, it's not a wise decision to bet against uh, NDSU in football, but I would bet on UND this year. Yay! <laughs> I'll bet you a six-pack. Okay, you got it. <laughs>